Hi, welcome to Stamp Sound. In this video, I'm going to tell you what microphone self noise is, and how to reduce it as much as possible. There's lots more information at the website so please consider visiting the site today at stampsound.com, and please, feel free to subscribe on YouTube also. Ok here we go. Microphones are to a sound engineer close to 80% of his or her job. They are the very tool that allows us to capture sound and make the magic of a moment be heard by millions of people. What if the microphone we are using to capture magic actually adds noise to the spell making the end result a crooked experiment? Well, after fighting noise like a superhero for over 20 years I have a thing or two to share with you about microphone self-noise and how to avoid it. If you happen to be an ASM artist, then pay special attention because this video will benefit you largely. So what exactly is microphone self-noise? Microphone self-noise is the sound that comes from the microphone capsule when no sound source is being captured by it. This measurement is often indicated in decibels and measured recording the microphone inside a soundproof container. The result is the noise level that the microphone will add to the sound source regardless of what it is. Usually, as a common rule, the better the craftsmanship of the microphone you own, the lower the self-noise level should be. On the other hand, the higher the sensitivity of the microphone and the lower the volume of the sound source, the more problems you will potentially have with the self-noise level of a microphone. Now that you know what self-noise is, it's time to learn how to stop it from destroying your recordings. Follow me in this crusade for better audio. Let's talk signal-to-noise ratio. What is the famous signal-to-noise ratio you have been reading everywhere? Well, the measure is done taking into account the acoustic level of 1 Pascal. This standardized world measurement is located at 94 decibels at 1 kHz. So, if the self-noise level of a microphone is, let's say, 14 decibels, then the signal-to-noise ratio is 80 decibels. Now, this is a great scenario because a microphone with 14 decibels of self-noise is a very quiet one. Frequency spectrum and microphone self-noise. This is a very important part of the explanation because the self-noise of the microphone is not perceived by the human ear as the same in every frequency. The example of the Pascal measurement locates it at 1 kHz which means in the mid and mid-high frequencies. If the same noise level would be present at, let's say 50 Hz then nothing would happen because it is not so present in our perception and you can very likely cut it off with a low-pass filter. Now, when the noise level is up in our mid-frequency, we need to remove it somehow or it will ruin our takes. Translating to decibels. Why is the signal-to-noise ratio translated into decibels? Well, because it is the measurement for the audio sources. If you happen to be recording a very loud distorted guitar coming from a Marshall full stack, then the self-noise of that microphone is irrelevant, there's too much going on to notice it. The more you have to crank the microphone to get audio out of it, the more problems you'll have with self-noise. Therefore, it is important to measure the decibels of your sound source when it's time to capture audio. If you are going for ASMR, quiet instruments, voiceover scenes, whispering, or low-volume talks, then, you definitely need to have a microphone with low self-noise to capture it flawlessly. Dynamics versus condensers all over again. This is only to make something clear to all the microphone lovers out there, self-noise levels apply only to active microphones. This means microphones that have phantom power running through them. For example, workhorses like your trusty Shure SM57s and SM58s will not be affected by this. On the other hand, they will not be able to pick up the subtle sound nuances you will need if you were, for example, doing an ASMR video. So, if it is a condenser microphone, you need to check on the self-noise ratio. What is a good microphone self-noise ratio? I would say that personally, I have a pre-established limit in this regard for microphones that I'm going to do vocals with. My limit is 74 decibels of noise to sound ratio. If you do the mathematics and measure it against 1 Pascal, 94 decibels, the result would be a self-noise level of 20 decibels. ASMR and spoken word these microphones should have a self-noise ratio above the 80 decibels to do the trick. The big difference in these genres and the rest is that you will very likely have to crank the microphone up and when you raise the gain, you also lift self-noise and that can be an inconvenience. Singers and acoustic instruments, for these endeavors, I would say that you can settle with a little less and be around 78 to 74 decibels depending on the volume of the sound source. 
If you have a powerful singer you can even let go a little. Same with the difference between fingerpicking subtleties and strumming choruses. I don't consider any large diaphragm condenser microphone above 22 to 24 decibels of self-noise worthy of studio work. Differentiating ambient noise from self-noise. This is a pitfall I see a lot of people fall for. Not every noise that you hear coming out of the speakers in the control room is microphone self-noise. There are many elements in that same chain that can be causing it. In fact, blaming microphones for noises in the signal should be your last option because there is less to be done in that sense and you can work with many other variables first. For example, it is important to understand that you can be getting noises from the room you're recording at, sound reflections from the walls and the ceiling, street noise, electrical current noise, and much more. The best way to fix this is to isolate the noise and listen to it carefully. If you crank it really loud you are usually able to distinguish with your own ears what it is. While self-noise is constant and monotonous, other sources have peaks. Let's talk preamp noise. Environmental noise can be a disturbance to your recordings, the noise coming from the equipment itself is just as problematic. If you are using a preamp to color the audio, you should bear in mind that you are adding another potential noise source to the signal. Simply disconnect it and go straight in with your microphone cable to the audio interface. If the annoying noise is gone, you now know what to do. How much does source volume influence self-noise? The final pitfall that I've seen countless people fall for is this, pay attention to the sound source volume. The louder the source, the more you can allow yourself to relax about self-noise and vice versa. In fact, the relationship between the volume you get from the sound source and the microphone self-noise has to be the main reason behind microphone selection in all cases it can potentially be an issue. The critical scenario, ASMR. This is, perhaps, the most critical scenario of them all. ASM artists need to engage the ASMR in their viewers and that requires no disturbances coming from the sound source. Zero self-noise is a chimera, something that doesn't exist yet. You can't have zero noise on a microphone. So, what you should look for is using as the lowest self-noise microphones on the market. Most of the specific brands like 3DIO can help you in this search. Always look for 80 decibels of noise to level ratio or higher. My personal choice I use regularly for low self-noise recording is the Shure KSM32. Check out this microphone on stampsound.com. What can you do to minimize microphone self-noise? Now, once you are recording and need to work with what you have, here are the recommendations on how to deal with microphone self-noise efficiently. DAW tricks. For those who are not going live in their endeavors, there are several things you can do with your DAW to fix microphone self-noise. Cancellation with inverted phase, I am sorry for the title spoiler, but this trick is too good to tell it slowly. The idea here is that microphone self-noise is constant. As such, it can be cancelled. What you need to do is to copy the track and then make them sync perfectly. Then, just inverse the phase of the second and all the noise should cancel itself out. This will have an effect on your audio but it is very useful for those dead air moments with your mic. EQ and filters, this is another one that is a little more drastic, apply an EQ where you feel there is microphone self-noise. What I do is record air for a minute, and then with graphic EQ, I lift all the frequencies one by one until I find the one that carries the noise and kill it. I do this before compression and effects and everything else. External factors and microphone self-noise. Let's talk about some of the things you can do to avoid noise from external factors. Avoid running power cables next to audio cables. Use a shock mount in every condenser. Find more info on shock mounts at stampsound.com. Use high and low pass filters. Double check preamps. Do proper sound treatment on the recording room. Do not put microphones close to signal interference, cell phone chargers and such. Go for a dynamic microphone if the source is strong enough. Final words on microphone self-noise. Noise is definitely our enemy as sound engineers. We battle against it day in and day out. A microphone with self-noise is like having an enemy infiltrated in one of our troops. It is the centuries-old Trojan horse bringing amazing vocals and a load of noise along in its belly. Choosing the right equipment for your recordings can prove to be a crucial ally in this struggle. Make sure that, if you are going to crank it, you are going to add gain only to the sound source and not grit to the overall result. 
If you can't avoid it, just follow the advice above. Don't forget to check out the full article for more advice on microphone self-noise at stampsound.com. Happy noise-free recording.